Yes, we are. I'll just wait for them to write. I'm here. There's friend. There he is. <laughs> Oh, and there's Supervisor Coonerty as well. So we do have the full board on. You're uh, muted, uh, Bruce. Yeah. God, look at that guy with the tie on. What's the deal? <laughs> He's on his way to a Christmas party. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. Are we right? Well, another minute. Yes. One we're, minute. We're ready. Yeah, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay. You just give me one moment and I'll start the webinar. You'll hear it say that it is recording. Very good. Okay. The webinar has started. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a special meeting of the uh, Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors. Uh, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig? Here. Friend? Here. Coonerty? Here. Caput? Here. McPherson? Here. Thank you, Chair. You have a quorum. Thank you. We have one item on the agenda today, but are there any late additions or corrections to the agenda? There are no late additions or corrections. Okay, I think that uh, they will just have a moment of silence um, before we get to uh, public comment. Okay, we will go to uh, uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? I am seeing one user raising their hand. Call in user one. Your microphone is available. Okay. They are not accepting the unmute. Caller 3038, your microphone is available. <laughs> Good morning, this is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I just want to note that there was no Pledge of Allegiance said before this meeting, and that bothers me a little bit. But um, that being said, I, I really want, I, I am surprised that this is the topic of today's special meeting. Um, I live in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and <clears throat> while we did receive six inches of rain, in that December 13th storm, it was not a disaster. <laughs> and I realized that having looked at some of the slides for today's presentation, there were uh, road problems. And, and I did watch the one video of the, um, the debris flow. <clears throat> but I'm concerned about the economic impacts of declaring a local state of emergency. I have just sent your board an email with um, some of the concerns regarding that are stated in California State Penal Code 396, which outline many economic restrictions that are placed on a jurisdiction when a local state of emergency is declared. These can last for as long as 180 days. And I just want your board to be aware of this impact that you could be um, causing local business owners, landlords, uh, consumer price uh, indexing things. And um, I want that to be discussed. Yeah. I understand that there is damage to the roads. Personally, I think this was a normal winter storm for our county, and I, I don't think it was an emergency. It does not meet the definition of a state of emergency in Government Code 8553, Section C, where there is extreme peril to safety of persons and property within the territorial limits of the county. I don't want this county to be seen as crying wolf when there really is not this level of peril that something caused. Okay, so you. that's my, my opinion, and I hope that you will publicly discuss the impacts of, this, of um, 
a possibility of declaring a local state of emergency. Thank you. Apart from your goal to get funding for road repairs. Thank you. Thank you. And you know something, I think I will uh, go to our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I'm sorry that uh, we passed through that. Um, if you'd just uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I, uh, I, I apologize for that omission. Uh, we Any other public comment? There are no other callers. Okay, we will go to our one item on the agenda, a resolution on a local emergency. Uh, Mr. Palacios, would you uh, explain that further? Yes, I'll read it into the record. This is uh, to consider a resolution ratifying the proclamation of a local emergency for the 2021 Atmospheric River Winter Storm Event on December 13, 2021, as proclaimed by the County Administrative Officer as the Director of Emergency Services on December 21st, 2021, and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the County Administrative Officer. And um, Chair McPherson and members of the board, we have Dave Reed, our OR3 director, who will be giving the staff report on this item. Thank you. Good morning, board. Uh, thank you for taking some time this morning um, to provide some clarity and context for why we're here today. Um, as Carlos read in, we had a major storm event on the 13th. Um, California co uh, code requires us to declare a disaster within 10 days. That's why we uh, proclaimed, why, that's why Carlos proclaimed the disaster on the 21st. Um, and then we have seven days after that proclamation to ratify it by your board. That provides us access to um, California Disaster Assistance Act funding um, to help repair the damaged roads. So I have a short presentation just to give you some context for, for why we're doing this and the magnitude of the damage that was sustained on the 13th. Um, and I believe Stephanie's going to um, cue that presentation. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so as I said, uh, we had this major event. Next slide. Um, we sustained damage to seven county maintained roads. Our public work staff and, and Director Machado um, worked hard to get initial damage estimates. Um, that initial damage estimate process took until Friday, December 17th. That's why we had to go into the following week. Um, the damage assessment at the time on Friday was just under $3 million. That estimate has been revised based on current um, estimates by some contractors to over $3 million in storm damage. The county um, has a threshold of just over a million dollars in damage to be able to declare a disaster. So you can see we exceeded that threshold three times over um, in, in justifying the, de the declaration. Um, this is a significant amount of money. Uh, as you all know, um, the county does not have um, this money sitting uh, available to repair these, these roads. So declaring a disaster today and ratifying it um, will give us the opportunity to access state funding. Next slide. Just a few pictures for those who haven't seen. Um, this, is, oh, this is Lodge Road, um, one of the more significant failures. Fortunately, this is in an area where it's not significantly um, impacting residences in the in the county, but it is a significant uh, damage uh, site. Next slide. This is Two Bar Road. Um, our public work staff worked very hard to provide some preliminary uh, stabilization measures. You can see in, in the in the picture on the right uh, to keep it from getting worse and to maintain access to residents in the in the Boulder Creek area. Next slide. Uh, we also experienced some storm water infrastructure damage. This is a culvert failure um, on Valencia Road. Next slide. And then we also had some damage on Granite Creek. Um, you can see this failure into the creek. Uh, and then we also, in addition to the road damage, we did experience a debris flow. So I wanted to share with all of you what that looks like. There was actually some video from a home um, uh, security camera system. And I wanted to share with you what 
a debrief will looks like we spent a lot of time, your board has spent a lot of time talking about and enacting policy to address debris flow uh, and rebuilding. Uh, and so the next slide is a short video from a property on Foreman Creek. And you'll be able to see um, the amount of material that is rafted by this debris flow. And there's a couple different angles of it. It's really short, um, but just gives you a scale, a sense of, of what can be transmitted by these storm events. So this is the normal flow in the creek. And then you'll start to see the woody debris and the size and scale of logs and mat and debris that is rafted by this debris flow in Foreman Creek. Fortunately, there was no major damage um, to county infrastructure. There was some damage to one property. Um, here it is again from another angle. This one's even more powerful. You'll see the, the major pulse come through here with the debris. And you'll see some of it get caught up on trees and it can, it can, it can jump the channel in those circumstances. It grabs a, a, a water line that was in the channel um, there. So just wanted to share with you all um, our, a, a documented debris flow that occurred in Foreman Creek. That's in the Boulder Brook neighborhood in, in uh, Boulder Creek. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. I'm here for questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reed. I, I just want to, I think, um, you know, it was it was frustrating for all of us to wait so long to uh, get clearance to some property owners to rebuild. Um, but just seeing that that one uh, uh, video of Foreman Creek, um, you know, if we would have had that storm last year, right after that, when we we made some improvements and clearances uh, after the storm, thank heavens. Uh, if that would have happened last year, God knows what we would have been facing today. So uh, I just want to say, uh, again, I thank the property owners for their patience. It's been frustrating for all of us to wait, uh, but we wanted to do it as, as correctly as we can. And I want to uh, comment, uh, say my many, many thanks to the Public Works Department and everybody involved with this uh, clearance um, that we did after the storm, anticipating uh, a winter storm last year. I, I just hate to think of what, would, what it would have been like if uh, we wouldn't have done some of that improvement and if we would have had some of those uh, a storm a heavy downpour. And it's the immediate downpour. It's not the long-range sprinkles that really cause this. It's the uh, really the big thrust of a downpour that causes uh, this ha to happen. So uh, thank heavens we do we do not have to say that we have another Montecito where people lost their lives. And also uh, just again, thanks to our public works department and everybody uh, who was engaged and, and the community foundation for following up on a debris flow study um, that we had. Um, we're much better prepared now. And uh, I'm just thankful that this didn't happen last year. So that's my general comments. And yes, I do think it's appropriate that we do declare this emergency. So anybody else that might have a comment? Mr. Ka uh, Supervisor Caput. Uh, thank you. Uh, the way I looked at it was uh, we're being proactive here. Uh, if we waited longer, uh, I think we would have a, a major problem even getting access uh, to the areas that would uh, potentially wash out. And uh, if we didn't have access to the area, uh, the cost would be much higher. And I, I don't know, is it some of it, uh, Dave, uh, or is it related uh, somewhat to uh, the fire uh, that we had uh, a, year, a year or so ago, uh, at least as far as access roads and areas nearby? It, it, it's hard it's hard to say whether all of it, some of the failures are outside the burn area so um, granite creek valencia and others are outside the burn area but it was certainly a, a significant amount of rain um the, some of the foreman creek debris flow is likely caused by um or exacerbated by the fire in the burn scar and then certainly lodge road is in the burn scar as well um so it, 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 there, there is likely some relationship there between the fire and that failure. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Okay, I'm just, um, again, uh, just thankful that we didn't have any dam damage or injury or loss of life, particularly in my uh, district in San Lorenzo Valley, Boulder Creek area in particular. Um, 
But um, is there uh, is there any, are there any comments from the public? Yes, Chair, I do have one more speaker from the public. Call in user one, your microphone is available. As a reminder, it is star six to unmute yourself from a telephone. Hi, uh, this is Marilyn Garrett calling, and I uh, agree with Becky Steinbrunner. I think it's unwarranted to call a state of emergency. Will this be the third state of emergency that the county will be under? And that gives dictatorial powers <clears throat> uh, when you declare such an emergency. No democracy takes place. And the track record of this county under state of emergencies to protect the public over this last year and a half, I think is quite dismal. Uh, the weather uh, extremes um, are um, quite unusual. And I have, I wanna refer you all to geoengineeringwatch dot org we know for years there have been weather modification programs and i'm going to read just a little bit because it's uh, exactly what your the consequences we're seeing global climate modification programs are threatening all life on earth climate engineering is further fueling record drought deluge and overall biosphere disintegration. This paper has NASA satellite images on it, which clearly reveal microwave transmission manipulation of aerosol clouds. And on the back here, so again, this is geoengineeringwatch.org. It says investigate inarguable climate engineering facts and footage, film footage. There is a picture here of a government document titled The Engineering the Climate. What are the known consequences of ongoing climate engineering operations? Further fueling the overall warming of the planet, contributing to extreme drought, flooding, and storms. Global please, geoengineering. Please, uh, complete your comments, please. Thank you. Yeah, it's completely disrupted the planetary hydrological cycle and thus weather systems all around the world. Thank I you. think we need to stop these geoengineering programs. <clears throat> there are no other speakers for public comment. I'll move the recommended action. Second. In the interest of public safety to our Santa Cruz County citizens and homeowners, uh, I'm glad to make that second. Please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you, motion passes unanimously. Okay, I believe that's the only item on our agenda today. So this uh, meeting uh, will be adjourned and we'll see you in 2022 at our next board meeting. Uh, what is it? January 11th, I believe. January 11th, yes. January 11th, 9 o'clock. Thank you and everybody. I hope you had a great holiday season and happy new year to each and every one of you. Have a great day. You're good. Bye-bye.